Our next speaker is Mr. Sean Duffy. Good afternoon, Madam President uh, and members of the City Council. My name is Sean Duffy, and I'm resident of the First Ward and a member of the Chicago Democratic Socialist of America. More than 25 million Americans have filed for unemployment over the last month, and a third of Americans weren't able to pay the rent at all. This crisis is devastating our city's working class, and we have a right to recovery. In the immediate, the city must enact an indefinite moratorium on evictions, halt all court hearings on filing for evictions and foreclosures, and weigh the collection of all rent, mortgage, and utility payments for the duration of the COVID crisis. The city must also acquire emergency housing units for homeless individuals so they can be safely sheltered during this crisis. Additionally, the Chicago Police Department must cease the escalated harassment of city residents, particularly on the south and west side, and instead suspend arrest and work the county state towards immediate mass incarceration. The alternative is continued spread of the virus within jails, prisons, and detention centers, which will result in mass death unless we do something. Finally, Madam President, I must speak to the emergency powers ordinance that was deferred and published on Wednesday and is now being considered this afternoon. You accused the aldermen who supported the DUP motion of grandstanding and told the press they were, quote, choosing to serve themselves instead of the residents who elected them, unquote. I will remind you that these aldermen were elected by the voters of their wards to represent them because of the issues they raise and because of the policies they fight for, because of their politics. But instead of debating issues or policy, you make petty personal attacks without any substance. Your total dismissal and continued disrespect towards the aldermen extends to their constituents and to the movements that they so tirelessly raise up. I must ask you this. Why should anyone trust you or your administration with the special powers laid out in this ordinance? In the midst of this crisis, your administration permitted Hilco to blow up a coal plant smokestack in a little village that left entire city blocks covered in toxic dust. We said reporting by ProPublica shows that you seem to have little interest and addressing even basic questions or concerns aldermen are raising about the city's response to the crisis. Another report by the Daily Line showed that while you claim that you were not briefed on the rent abatement ordinance being introduced today by Alderman Martin, that there is an email record showing that a draft of the proposal was sent by the aldermen to your policy team weeks ago. Is your administration disorganized and mismanaged, Madam President, or were you just lying? As others have noted, the city council cannot be being rather easily over Zoom. In fact, the council should meet twice a month as directed by the municipal code. This emergency power ordinance will give the mayor unchecked control and erode the role of the council as a democratic body. I urge council members to vote no, and I urge the city to take bold action now to protect the working class of the city from its full devastation as a result of this crisis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Duffy. Our next speaker is Dr. Denise French. Thank you, for the opportunity to uh, speak today. Um, I realize you have many serious problems to deal with, uh, but I'd like to speak out on behalf of the carriage horses and their owners. I'm Dr. Dennis French, a diplomat of the American Board of Veterinary Practitioners, certified in equine practice with over 42 years of professional experience with these horses. I'm also a professor at the University of Illinois College of Veterinary Medicine, a member of the Illinois State Veterinary Medical Association, a Champaign County Farm Bureau member and Vice President of the Horsemen's Council of Illinois. As a representative of these groups, uh, we strongly oppose the proposed ordinance to ban the use of carriage horse services and restrict the licensing of the carriage companies within the city of Chicago. As an educator and veterinarian, the welfare of horses is a critical component of everything that I do and believe in. I assure you that the care and well-being of Chicago's carriage horses is foremost in the minds of their owners, the equine veterinarians that care for them at regular intervals, and the farriers that provide all-important foot care. I would also share that representatives of the Horsemen's Council have repeatedly inspected these horses, the harnesses that are used on them, and the stables where they are kept, and we have found no causes for concern. These horses are well cared for, healthy, and they like to work. From a scientific point of view, studies of carriage horses have documented that measurement of their stress hormones when working are actually lower than horses that are grazing on pasture. And they in fact remain lower when they return to their overnight stable. Claims of mistreatment due to work or insufficient uh, care are simply unjustified. In another study that was just published in May of 2020, 
in reaction to claims of mistreatment that those authors found that the duration and intensity of the workload did not change the welfare of these horses. Carriage horses are ambassadors for the city of Chicago. It's important and appropriate that the city leaders be concerned about the health and welfare of the horses on your streets. As a veterinarian and horse owner who has dedicated my life to the health and welfare of all animals, including horses, I ask you that you vote against this ordinance. Please allow us to work with you on appropriate regulations and location of the carriage horse operations, utilizing scientific data and facts to allay any concerns for ethical and humane treatment of these carriage horses. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you, Dr. French. The next speaker is Mr. Brian Bennett. Hello, I'm Brian Bennett. I'm speaking today for the hundreds of thousands of unemployed renters of Chicago and I'm speaking directly to Mayor Lightfoot and my alderman, Harry Osterman, who is chair of the Housing and Real Estate Committee on the immediate need for rent and mortgage cancellation in Chicago. We are desperate. April 1st came and went with almost no action, just words. Now May 1st is here, almost no action, just words. You are leaving the hardworking people who rent in this city behind. Tell the governor publicly to lift the ban on rent control so you can cancel rent and mortgage payments for the rest of this crisis plus three months. That would take care of renters, homeowners, and small landlords. Enough memes, enough funny videos, and most importantly, enough funding your campaigns with donations from so-called housing providers. Mayor Lightfoot, I see you talking to experts and Ivy League economic advisors. Have you talked to any tenant unions? Have you talked to Lift the Ban, the Rent Control Coalition? After $1.3 billion in tax breaks for Lincoln Yards, $20 million for Hillco, and not a single major ordinance for renters in your first year in office, I am scared for me and my girlfriend and my neighbors, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes to keep us housed. What are you willing to do? I will conclude by saying to Alderman Osterman and the rest of City Council, the worst part is, I think I know why we're not moving urgently to help renters. How can we trust that you're fighting for us when we look at your publicly listed campaign donors and almost half of them are landlords and developers? In just the last year, your donors include Devon Realty, Silver Property Group, Edgewater Properties, Aleppo Properties, McMaster Properties, Hunter Properties. I don't have time to list them all, but the point is I'm worried that they are getting their money's worth right now. Please clean up your donor sheets, City Council. Promise that you will cancel rent and mortgage payments if the ban is lifted and publicly tell the governor to lift the ban on rent control today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. The next speaker is Mr. Ezekiel Morris. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor Lightfoot and Alderman of the City of Chicago. My name is Zeke Morris. I am the managing broker of Exit Strategy Realty uh, EMA Management. My office is located at 7300 South Cottage Grove in the Sixth Ward. I'm a past president of the Chicago Association of Realtors, and currently I serve as a treasurer uh, for Illinois Realtors, and I would like to address Alderman Matt Martin's ordinance uh, except for introduction at this meeting. I'm against the ordinance, and I ask you, the City Council, to stand against it as well. I serve the community as a I have served the community as a real estate broker and property manager for over 30 years. And although we've not always agreed, uh, we have had uh, we have worked together with the city to achieve what was best for our citizens. The ordinance does not promote the spirit of cooperation, and it is harmful to the industry for all. Some of the unintended consequences include the following issues: one. The ordinance does not provide protections uh, for the landlord. Two, uh, tenants who move out with balances uh, will have to be pursued uh, via small claims court, which provides an additional burden on our landlords. Uh, a third thing is the ordinance fails to provide a way to confirm that even uh, although uh, COVID, we, we know that we're in the midst of, uh, of this pandemic, but there is no, no, uh, there's no way for us to actually uh, verify the actual emergency. The ordinance commits the landlords but offers no property tax or mortgage relief. 
but it is certified in the tenants of a thinking private party arranger. And one of the things that I, in order to uh, speak to this, I also want to say that there is, you know, we are in support of limiting the entry of dwelling during the stay at home order. Uh, you know, we can support that based upon health concerns. As stated by other housing providers, the most important issue today is that we continue to promote working together with our residents. One of the things that I want to point out to you is that the way this is put together, the ordinance gives the impression that most of your owners are institutions, when in fact there are people just like you and me who care about the health and safety of the city we serve. And I urge you uh, to reconsider. Thank you for this opportunity, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Morris. The next speaker is Mr. Michael Robin. Robin, I am a member of the Autonomous Tenants Union in Chicago. We work to inform people of their rights and help people facing eviction and uh, other issues with their landlords. We've mostly been based out of the Albany Park area. Um, but since this crisis began, we've been stretching extremely thin, dealing with an avalanche of calls from all over the city. People are being pressured and harassed and leaving their homes, both legally and illegally, and sometimes with no idea about where they could possibly go. Landlords that are saying there's no need for this are either lying or completely out of touch with the struggles that their tenants are dealing with. We're getting people constantly being told to leave just because the landlord decided to sell their place or because um, of some made-up idea about how they violated the lease or because they were a couple days late on rent. Um, it's happening all over the place. The landlord is asking you to trust the landlord to do the best thing. Um, are either lying or just out of touch because we cannot trust them. We've heard hundreds and hundreds of stories. Um, and in fact, we have a petition asking for our executive leaders to cancel rent and mortgages and offer tenant protections. 17,000 people have signed that to date. We've taken some comments from those. Um, there are thousands of comments of people that aren't political, just begging, begging for relief. And I don't feel that the mayor or other executive leaders have listened. Um, you can read those comments at bit.ly slash tenant stories. They're all on the Twitter page. And what I would say is that if landlords are complaining about these pro-tenant ordinances because they don't qualify for mortgage relief or, you know, they're struggling themselves, why not instead of trying to crash to the mildest proposal possible, they could join us in demanding both rent and mortgage relief. Be, and, and I'll tell you, it's because they're worried about profit, not surviving like the rest of us. So there is one protection in place that actually offers much more than what the city and uh, the state is actually offering, and that's the CARES Act, which is a federal moratorium on evictions and late fees. Currently, a fraction of our residents are covered by this, but they don't even know about it. So if you want to find out if you're covered by this act so your landlord can't file an eviction or charge late fees, go to bit.ly slash cares test. Um, the city needs to do more to promote this information and make it available and enforce these laws. Um, the mayor recently was reported saying she didn't think that providing updates on proposed plans to help people out of work was a, quote, good use of her time. Um, she gave a lottery of 2,000 people getting $1,000 each. 83,000 tenants applied. Um, she has a work a task force where I see no mention of housing or rent relief. Her actions and her comments on the deepening crisis suggest that she's out of touch and centralizing power here right now. Is Thank you, Mr. Robin. Your time has expired. The next speaker is Mr. Andrew Lovell. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for giving me time to speak today before you. My name is Andrew Lovell, and my family owns a small restaurant, Owens Crown Cafe in Lakeview, Ward 44. On March 21st of this year, we were looking forward to celebrating our second anniversary of being open. We came from humble beginnings and are proud of what we've accomplished. As you know, March 21st turned out to be one of the last days which restaurants in the city were allowed to be open to the public. Our plans for celebrations, which included our staff and our customers, were put on hold on what would have otherwise been a special day for us. However, we are not alone. This is a dark time for restaurants in the city. Our industry was among the first to be majorly impacted and forced to close. 
Additionally, we will likely be among the last to resume operations to the public. We are not alone. Businesses, big and small, are suffering. Concert venues, brick and mortar retailers, small family-owned restaurants like mine, all types of businesses here in Chicago are under an enormous burden to continue paying rent when we have no income whatsoever coming in. We are not alone. For small family-owned businesses like my own, this is us twice, since we are not only paying for our commercial lease, but also for our residential leases. We are not alone. Our staff and our workers around the city are suffering. Restaurant workers across the city have been hit incredibly hard. In a sense, we will likely be the first and the last out. When we reopen to the public, it will take a long time before we get to the point where we were before all of this. And if we do reach that point, we'll consider ourselves lucky. You have past evictions being heard in court until April 15th and ask that landlords be compassionate during this time and give tenants some grace. Now that April 15th is behind us, unfortunately, many landlords are not so compassionate and many are not giving any sort of grace. Many businesses like mine have seen our revenue drop to near zero percentages from what it was. We have no money coming in and we are expected to continue paying for our space, which you have barred us from using. We've been forced to close in the interest of the greater public health. We've done the right thing. We've been responsible and closed for the greater good. It is time for the city to do the responsible thing, not only for restaurant workers, but for all residents and workers in the city. Please put pressure on state government to lift the Rent Control Preemption Act of 1997 and enact a mortgage and rent cancellation until this is all over and people actually have the means to pay their rent. Please put your voices behind the blueprint for recovery, which the National Restaurant Association has pushed for. This uncertainty of what the future even looks like for us is overwhelming, and I appreciate any and all effort you're putting forth to help us during this time. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lovell. That time for public comments has expired. This concludes public comment. The chair recognizes uh, Chairman Dow. Thank you, Madam President. At this time, I move to consider one item of unfinished business that I noticed up pursuant to Rule 41, an ordinance authorizing various emergency actions undertaken in response to the COVID-19 epidemic pandemic, which was deferred and published and appears in the Journal of Proceedings of April 22nd, 2020, as a direct introduction. If no one wishes to speak on this item, Madam President, I move passage by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Madam Chairman, Madam President. Can you, uh, Alderman, folks, uh, just Alderman one second. Alderman. Thank you. I would just ask if you're uh, wishing to speak, since we all can't see the screen at the same time, please identify yourself and then I will uh, call on you. Lemon Lopez. Madam President, a point of order. Okay. Alderman Irvin, I'm sorry. Alderman Lopez, I believe, has the floor. Alderman Lopez. Thank you, Madam President. It was going to be for a point of order that the regular order of business is for the Finance mm -hmm. Committee to proceed, not the Budget Committee, and allowing this would be in violation of our orders without moving for suspension of the rules to go outside of the regular order of business. Nicely done, Lopez. Um, actually, Alderman Lopez, pursuant to rule three, all questions relating to the propriety of business should be decided by the chair without debate to appeal. Can I appeal the decision of the chair to the body? Hold on one second. Further, uh, the per I haven't even ruled yet, Alderman Lopez. So just <laughs> I'm, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> the presiding chair, uh, the presiding officer, um, shall decide all questions of uh, order um, subject to appeal. So I ruling that um, Alderman Dow's uh, motion uh, is in order, and denying your motion. Then I appeal the decision of the chair to the body, Madam President. The question before the body is: Shall the ruling of the chair? which finds that um, Alderman Dow's uh, motion is in order, uh, shall that ruling uh, be overturned? Shall the, shall the ruling be sustained? A yes vote is that the ruling of the chair to allow for Alderman Dow's motion to go forward. Uh, and hear the item now. 
is appropriate. Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Alderman Lespada. Yes. Alderman Hopkins. Yes. Alderman Dowell. Yes. Alderman King. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman Harrison. Dow. Alderman Sawyer. No. Alderman Mitchell. Yes. Alderman Harris. Alderman Harris. Yes. Alderman Beal. No. Alderman Zalowski Garza. Yes. Alderman Thompson. Yes. Alderman Cardenas. Yes. I'm sorry, Alderman Cardenas. Yes. Alderman Quinn. Yes. Alderman Burke. No. Alderman Lopez. No. No. Alderman Coleman. No. Alderman Moore. Yes. Alderman Curtis. Alderman Curtis. Folks, please remember to unmute Alderman your phone. We're doing a vote. Alderman Curtis. Alderman O'Shea. Yes. Alderman Taylor. No. Alderman Brookins. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez. Yes. Alderman Tavares. Yes. Alderman Scott. Yes. Alderman Cicho Lopez. No. Alderman Maldonado. No. What the hell? Alderman Burnett. Yes. Alderman Irvin. Alderman Irvin. Alderman Telefiero. Yes. Alderman Ravoyas. Yes. Alderman Cardona. Yes. Alderman Wagasback. Yes. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. No. Alderman Austin. Yes. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. No. Alderman Viegas. Yes. Alderman Mitz. Yes. Alderman Spazzato. Yes. Alderman Nugent. Yes. Alderman Vasquez. No. Alderman Napolitano. No. Alderman Riley. Yes. Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderman Tunney. Yes. Alderman Gardner. Yes. Alderman Kappelman. Yes. Alderman Martin. Yes. Alderman Osterman. Yes. Alderman Haddon. Yes. Alderman Silverstein. Yes. Alderman Curtis. Alderman Curtis, yes. Alderman Irvin. Alderman Irvin, no. I have, Your Honor, there are 36 yeas, 14 nays. All right. The ruling of the chair is sustained. Thank you. Chairman Dow. Yes, if, if there's no other uh, comments, then I would call for a Madam moment. President. Can you please identify? Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to speak on this item, and I'm sure other colleagues would like to speak on this item as well. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor. This past Wednesday, I took action with four of my colleagues to ensure that millions in federal emergency dollars reach Chicago's hardest hit communities on the west and south sides. I joined with Alderman Lopez, Taylor, Sid Cho, and Rosana Rodriguez to defer this ordinance to ensure it could be improved to include true oversight and an equity lens. I would have felt comfortable voting for this ordinance today if it had included those reasonable oversight and equity provisions. Unfortunately, despite our efforts, ordinance before us today lacks guarantees that emergency dollars will be appropriated through an equity lens. Absent those guarantees, I must vote no on this ordinance and urge my colleagues to do so as well. Why? 
Because while black Chicagoans are 30% of our city's population, they make up 60% of our city's COVID-19 deaths. Why? Because Latino majority zip codes in Chicago are currently seeing the fastest rate of COVID-19 community spread. That is why we are fighting to ensure that this ordinance governing the appropriation of hundreds of millions in federal emergency dollars puts the most impacted and vulnerable Chicagoans first. In response to our attempts to amend this ordinance to include an equity lens, we have been told to trust this mayor. I must remind my colleagues that in this nation, policymakers put their trust in laws, not people. At the federal level, we have seen the disastrous effects of policies that put their trust in one sole executive. Well-intentioned policies that empower the presidency of Barack Obama are now being abused under President Trump. And here in Chicago, we have seen the disastrous effects of when we trust the mayor to be Chicago's sole decision maker and authority. Mayor Lightfoot has unilateral control of our schools and teachers had to go on strike for 11 days to win basic necessities for our children like nurses. Mayor Lightfoot has unilateral control over the issuance of demolition permits and we have seen what happened with Hilco, where a failure in this administration's demolition oversight left Little Village residents covered in debris and dust. As Chicago's teachers, parents, and students learned just months ago, when it comes to this mayor, you have to put it in writing. And so we have sought to put into writing guarantees that an equity lens will be applied to federal emergency dollars. That reasonable request was maligned, ignored, and dismissed. I will not malign, ignore, or dismiss the Chicagoans fighting for equity and the appropriation of federal emergency dollars. The Action Center on Race and the Economy states, quote, it is important for city council members to play an active role in deciding the specific types of federal eligible programs they want to authorize and the types they want to restrict to ensure their constituent interests are represented. The Action Center on Race and the Economy further states, that we can use these funds to ensure that it reaches the hardest hit communities that are impacted by COVID-19. The other night, Carol Marine of WC said this power grab is reminiscent of Emmanuel and Daly, and that caucus pushback and council pushback was rational. Mike Dunkey said that we are elected officials, and that what we are saying is this is supposed to be a democracy. This is supposed to be good government. That's something that this mayor campaigned on. Absent these equitable provisions, absent these true oversight provisions, I cannot support this ordinance. And I just want to point out one last thing. There has been a mistruth that has been said about this ordinance. It's been said that it's needed in order to buy PPE expeditiously. Multiple municipal procurement experts, as well as the legal counsel of the city council at the budget committee, made it very clear that that is simply false. The mayor has the power that she has right now to procure PPE. She's been doing it. So to say that this ordinance and not voting for it is somehow blocking PPE to the hardest hit community and to our health professionals is a lie. It was a lie created at the last minute to try and push this forward. So I'm proud to stand with the Illinois Nurses Association in this fight for equity in our civics COVID-19 response. The Illinois Nurses Association is our state's largest, most powerful nurses union, and their members are on the front lines of the fight against COVID-19. They are asking us to vote no on this ordinance unless it includes an equity lens, unless it includes true oversight to make sure that this money gets to our hardest hit communities. I urge my colleagues to vote no. I urge my colleagues to say yes to equity, true oversight, for us to do our jobs and not abdicate our responsibility to meet as a council to have oversight over the city's purse. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderman Sucho Lopez. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And um, I, I want to echo the, the words of Alderman Carlos Ramirez Rosa, because it's important that I think the public and my colleagues understand the importance of this vote. I heard from my colleagues about the importance of co-governance. And this is not co-governance. For way too long, we have had a city that was dominated by the elites, by corporations and developers. Those are the same actors 
that want to continue to run the city without accountability, leaving behind people of color, black and brown communities that today are suffering. We have um, across the world, and I want to speak directly to my colleagues, you all know the necessities of black communities who have been disproportionately affected, affected by this virus, this pandemic. 70% of the fatalities in our communities undocumented residents that are yet to receive necessary support, the hungry families, families that are suffering from hunger, cannot pay the rents, they cannot afford their mortgages, and they need answers. We have heard that from the public today. The needs in small businesses, the, the, the vast majority of Chicagoans who are struggling today. This is the time that we come together. This is the time that we govern with integrity, with responsibility, with unity. The people of Chicago did not vote for unilateral decisions, no matter who they were. If it was the local alderman or the mayor, they voted for accountability and transparency. And I want to go back to what happened in Little Village, because it's important that the public understand what is at stake here. On March 31st, Alderman Hopkins and I sent a letter directly to the mayor's office, warning about the issue with pollutants in our community. That's two weeks in advance of what happened in Little Village with a permit, and we were questioning permits that were given. Well, we were questioning that, and we had not only we have state representatives, we have experts. That letter was never responded. There was a response, a response after the fact what happened in Little Village in Yilko is an atrocity. Furthermore, I'm very concerned not only about the lack of response. But just after the, the, the whole scandal is starting to wipe down, we start hearing that apparently now there are you know, big supporters of the Hilco co uh, company in Little Village. That there are apparently very big supporters over there who have a community that had to breathe dust. We have to breathe dust in our communities in the middle of a pandemic. What we need is accountability. We need co-governance in order for us to make good decisions and bring the resources that our communities need. We cannot go back to the times where there were one mayor overseeing everything and a rubber stamp council. My colleagues, I speak to you who have constituents that are suffering today about the importance of voting your conscience on this. Vote for your constituents. Make sure that we have the necessary resources for testing to test our constituents. Make sure that we have the necessary resources for housing, for homelessness. We have people who are hungry again and I repeat, and they need those resources. We can no longer go back again to those times where bankers were running our schools, where bankers were giving themselves big salaries and, loan, and lending money and borrowing money with toxic start, uh, interest rates. We can no longer go back to those times when unilateral decisions impose a horrific, permit, uh, horrific parking meter system that privatizes our parking system and disproportionately affect people of color. We today must come together for governance, co-governance. We want our work together. We have put amendments. The last thing I'd like to say is that on, on April 19th, we also sent a letter with amendments that we wanted to consider. I welcome my colleagues who have been pushing for more amendments that only happened after the council mobilized that we were able to get some amendments for a sunset date to make sure that we impose and we don't let companies to contract without economic disclosure, disclosure uh, statements. We cannot go back to those times. This is our opportunity to come together. By the way, we still not have gotten uh, a response on that, on those amendments. And that's the reason why I urge you, I urge you to vote no, to vote to make sure that we have co-governance, that we have a council that governs. I want to urge you, all my colleagues, to think about your constituents. This is our time to come together. This is our time to be the leaders that they expect us to be in crisis. This is not the time to leave blank checks to anyone. And this is a matter of issues. This is not personal. 
We can no longer continue with these personal attacks when something doesn't go our way. This is the time to be the leaders and lead by example. This is the time for compassion, for collaboration, and co-governance. And I urge you to think your vote, think for your constituents. Thank you. I mean, the chairman recognizes um, Alderman Urban. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Madam President, uh, members of the council. Um, just a um, couple of points here that I think we need to uh, truly look at and understand. Um, in no way, shape, or form do I believe, or do I believe members of this council believe, that we are to block the specific execution of the executive office, meaning that we should not block the ability of our executive to respond to the impending emergency that exists that we have currently. As it relates to buying protective gear, telling our departments what to do, all of those things, we as city council are not in directly in the mix of that. That is the executive's responsibility and her purview to oversee. So as it relates to the conversation around appropriations and how, how and when and where we will spend money, I fully believe that is something that we as a city council should set parameters on and definitely weigh in. So there are two pieces of conversation here today uh, as it relates to this. Uh, appropriation from that aspect of it. Again, we started at one point about the ability to spend money to give the procurement officer the ability to spend above the $500,000 limit. If those things are necessary, again, I have no objection to that. What I do have an objection to is our ability to weigh in and vote about the policy of how the balance of our funds are going to be spent. There are two pots of money here, let's all remember. There's the Stafford Act money, which is the money for the direct expenses of the emergency which we're under, which our budget director estimates to be between $150 to $200 million, with a 75% share of those dollars being borne by the federal government and the possibility of 100% being borne by the federal government. The question that I think we have to ask ourselves today is, with the balance of the CARES Act money, which could be anywhere between uh, 470, which is what we have today, uh, or, or 420 some odd million dollars if we have to use that money to pay our 25% our share of the estimated $200 million. What is it that we do with that money? Uh, as a council, I believe that we should have the ability to appropriate those dollars and that not be strictly an executive decision. The decision to put money toward technology for our public school children or to create hotspots or the ability for us to dedicate funds to rental or mortgage relief, all of these items are, are something that should be subject to debate and subject to a vote by this body. These are items that should not just unilaterally be determined by the executive branch, whereby well, you may have a, a seat in a, in a working group. But again, I think our residents sent us down here to make decisions and to vote. I do not want to go to the table uh, in, in a room such as that as a beggar. My, my constituents didn't send me down here to be a beggar. They sent us down here to make policy, to make rational choices, and to work with everyone so we can have what is best for the city in its entirety. So I would just ask us that if we feel that it's okay to essentially give up our roles in setting forth a policy and directing where funds are going to be spent outside of the emergency, I mean the after effects, the mortgage relief, the business relief, the technology needs. All of these are eligible expenses uh, under the grant as, as, as uh, stated on the website of the Department of Treasury. I believe that we should have a not only a voice, but a vote in how those things are going to occur. Again, not, not saying that our, our mayor should, should not be able to act and respond with the emergency. There's over $200 million worth of money that the federal government has given us for that. It is the additional funds that, that I believe that we need to have a voice. So again, this question I, I think may in some respects be, be muddled, but if we say, say yes today, we will not have a vote or a voice on how the balance of this action will occur. So with that, I would just ask that, that, we, uh, that we reconsider this matter and that we uh, work as a collective body to have a voice in how we determine the balance of the funding be spent uh, as it relates to the CARES Act and any additional money that may come out of the CARES Act that is not used 
for direct expenses such as personal uh, personal protective equipment, hospital expenses, and the like. So if we could, uh, you know, we could think about it in that standpoint. I think we may come up with a different answer. Thank you, Madam President. The chair recognizes Rodriguez Sanchez. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to echo the comments made by my colleagues. Um, I, I want to speak to the fact that we are talking about this expenditure of, of funds that need to be used for the emergency, for emergency relief to address this emergency. The issue is that a lot of the issues related to this emergency are structural issues that we have been dealing with for a very long time. COVID-19 didn't cause homelessness. COVID-19 didn't bring poverty or violence. And all of these things are threatening the lives of our people. The fact that people are not able to have a roof over their head. Um, the fact that domestic violence is on the rise. And all of these things are part of this emergency. Um, so I, I wanted to read uh, an excerpt from um, the Congressional Research Services Section 5001D of the CARES Act that explains what some of these funds can be used for. And I think this is a really important thing for people to know as we talk about um, how we need to be using uh, these funds with equity. Um, so according to the Congressional Research Services, uh, the CARES Act allows state and local governments to use funds from the CRF or Corona, uh, Coronavirus Relief Fund to pay for programs that, number one, are necessary expenditures incurred due to public health emergency with respect to coronavirus disease 2019. Number two, were not accounted for in the budget most recently approved as of the date of enactment, March 27, 2020, of this section for the state or government. And number three, were incurred during the period that begins March 1, 2020 and ends on December 30, 2020. I think um, it is important for us in the council to be able to uh, have a say on how we're going to be addressing this emergency, how these programs are going to be affecting the lives of people that are seeing their lives threatened by a lot of things, not only getting sick with coronavirus, but all that this virus is causing in our community from unemployment to, to the fact that uh, people can ensure that they're going to have a roof over their head. Um, so I urge my colleagues also to vote no um on this ordinance and i really hope that we can start working more together to ensure um, an equitable response in in this city thank you the chair recognizes uh, alderman riley uh thank you madam president um i'm just going to speak very briefly to the revised ordinance before us um and remind my colleagues that i was one of the vocal critics of the original proposal. And I want to thank you, uh, Mayor, for listening to us and pulling back that original proposal um, and limiting the scope um, by building in important things like uh, a termination date of June 30th by requiring the budget director to make weekly reports to the city council. Um, and I want to also um, clear up what seems to be a point of confusion. The vast majority uh, of the funds that we're discussing here will uh, be brought before the city council to be appropriated. Um, another important thing I think that should be noted is that the vast majority of the funds we're talking about um, are COVID related reimbursable. Um, and then for those folks who really still don't feel comfortable with this, I think I should remind everyone that um, the general public, the Chicago taxpayers, will um, be applying a critical eye to the decisions that uh, this administration makes and um, the city council makes over the next several months. And there will be uh, an accounting for that. Um, but I ultimately have faith in Mayor Lightfoot um, to be judicious with these special powers that we give to her. Um, we certainly uh, are not being asked to uh, sit in the trunk anymore. I, I look at this as um, riding shotgun, but allowing the, the administration the flexibility they need 
to be nimble to negotiate uh, contracts for PPE and for testing supplies. Um, I think that's important. And um, in that unique circumstance, and, and frankly, the fact we're all dealing with a global pandemic um, justifies us allowing these unique powers for a limited amount of time. Um, and so I do support the ordinance. And uh, for that purpose, Madam President, uh, I move to call the previous question. Um, this is Alderwoman Haddon. Uh, looking to speak. I called the previous question. Uh, Alderman, Alderman Riley has called the question. Um, if you uh, support um, ending debate and moving forward with a vote on Chairman Dow's motion, vote yay. Uh, if not, vote nay. Point of, uh, point of order, Madam President, by Alderman Lopez. Alderman Lopez. There's no second to this motion which means there's nothing to vote on at present. There's no second required, Madam President. There's no second required, Alderman Lopez. I'm sure you're no. very familiar with the rules. This body doesn't require a second. So we are now moving forward on Alderman Riley's motion to call the question. If you want to uh, support the motion and debate and move to Chairman Dow's motion, vote yay. If not, vote nay. Mr. Clerk. Alderman Laspada. Nay. I'm sorry, Alderman Laspada. Nay. Alderman Hopkins. Yes. Alderman Dowell. Aye. Alderman King. Nay. Nay. Alderman Harrison. Alderman Harrison. Nay. Alderman Sawyer. No. No. Alderman Sawyer. No. Alderman Mitchell. No. Alderman Mitchell. Alderman Mitchell. Aye. Is that aye, Alderman? Yes. Alderman Harris. Aye. Alderman Beal. No. Alderman Silovsky Garza. Aye. Alderman Thompson. Aye. Alderman Cardenas. Aye. Alderman Quinn. Aye. Alderman Burke. Alderman Burke. Alderman Lopez. No. Oh. Alderman Coleman. No. Alderman Moore. No. Alderman Curtis. Yay. Alderman O'Shea. Aye. Alderman Taylor. No. Alderman Brookins. No. Alderman Rodriguez. Aye. Alderman Tavares. Aye. Alderman Scott. Yay. Alderman Cicho Lopez. No. Alderman Molinado. No. Alderman Burnett. Yes. Alderman Irvin. No. Alderman Telfiero. Aye. Yes. Alderman Raboyas. Aye. Alderman Cardona. Yes. Alderman Wagaspak. Yes. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. No. Alderman Austin. Yes. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. No. Alderman Viegas. Yes. Alderman Mitz. Yes. Alderman Spazzato. Yes. Alderman Nugent. Yes. Alderman Vasquez. No. Alderman Napolitano. No. Alderman Riley. Yes. Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderman Tunney. Yes. Alderman Gardner. Yes. Alderman Kappelman. No. Alderman Martin. Yes. Alderman Osterman. Yes. Alderman Haddon. No. Alderman Silverstein. Yes. Alderman Burke. No. <clears throat> Your Honor, there are 30 yeas and 20 nays. The uh, motion to call the question is granted. Uh, Chairman Dow. <laughs> Thank you. 
Dow. Chairman Dow, please proceed. Yes, um, Madam President, uh, I, if there's no other comment, I move that uh, we have a vote on this matter. Mr. Clark, please call the roll. And to be clear, <clears throat> what you're voting on is uh, the emergency um, ordinance. A yay vote is supportive of the, of the ordinance, a nay vote is against it. Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Alderman Spire. No. Alderman Hopkins. No. Alderman Dowell. Aye. Alderman King. No. Alderman Harrison. No. Alderman Sawyer. No. Alderman Mitchell. No. Alderman Harris. Yes. Alderman Beal. No. Alderman Sidlowski Garza. Aye. Alderman Thompson. Aye. Alderman Cardenas. Aye. Alderman Quinn. Aye. Alderman Burke. No. Alderman Lopez. No. Alderman Coleman. No. Alderman Moore. No. Alderman Curtis. Aye. Alderman O'Shea. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Alderman Taylor. No. Alderman Brookins. Alderman Brookins. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez. No. Alderman Tavares. Aye. Alderman Scott. Aye. Alderman Ticho Lopez. No. Alderman Maldonado. No. Alderman Burnett. Yes. Alderman Irvin. No. no. Alderman Telefiero. Aye. Alderman Roboyas. Aye. Alderman Cardona. Yes. Alderman Wagaspat. Yes. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. No. Alderman Austin. Aye. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. No. Alderman Villegas. Aye. Alderman Miss. Aye. Alderman Spazzaro. Yes. Alderman Nugent. Aye. I'm sorry, Alderman Nugent. Is that I, Alderman? Yes. Thank you. Alderman Vasquez. No. Alderman Napolitano. No. Alderman Riley. Aye. Alderman Smith. Aye. Alderman Tunney. Aye. Alderman Gardner. Aye. Alderman Kappelman. Aye. Alderman Martin. No. Alderman Osterman. Aye. Alderman Haddon. Aye. Alderman Silverstein. Alderman Silverstein. Aye. Your Honor, there are there are twenty nine days, twenty one days. Alderman Thompson for on the motion for reconsideration. Thank you, Madam President. A motion to reconsider the last vote. All those in favor of the motion for reconsideration say aye. 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 Yeah. aye. All those opposed say no. 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 The no's have it. The motion for reconsideration is denied. Committee reports. <clears throat> The chair recognizes Alderman Wagus back, Finance Committee. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm reporting for the City Council's Committee on Finance, which met March 12, 2020. I will call item number six first, which is an ordinance concerning the sale of city-owned property 
located at 3518 and 3520 South Halstead Street and the authority to enter into an executive redevelopment agreement with our Revival Chicago LLC for the restoration of the Ramova Theater located in the 11th Ward. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on the matter, I move to concur with the recommendation of the committee by roll call vote. This is in Alderman Thompson's word. I didn't know if Alderman Thompson wished to speak on it. Alderman, Alderman Clerk, I'm sorry, the chairman, uh, Mr. Clerk, let me try it one more time. Please. Madam President. Oh, Madam President. Uh, yeah, um, the chair recognizes uh, Alderman Thompson. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, we've had a lot of debate. I, I just uh, just wanted to say that this is going to be a great project for our ward in the city of Chicago. And I'll keep my comments very brief. And I just want to thank uh, members of the committee and respectfully request that the uh, council support this project. It's going to be great for the entire city. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Thompson. Now, again, Mr. Clerk, if no one else chooses to speak, please call the roll. Alderman Mata. Aye. Alderman Hopkins. Aye. Alderman Dowell. Aye. Alderman King. Aye. Alderman Harrison. Aye. Alderman Sawyer. Aye. Alderman Mitchell. Alderman Mitchell. I'm sorry, Alderman. Aye. Alderman Harris. Aye. Alderman Beal. Aye. Alderman Sedlowski Garza. Alderman Garza. Alderman Thompson. Aye. Alderman Cardenas. Aye. Alderman Quinn. Aye. Alderman Burke. Aye. Alderman Lopez. Aye. Alderman Coleman. Aye. Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Curtis. Aye. Alderman O'Shea. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Brookings. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez. Aye. Alderman Tavares. Aye. Alderman Scott. Aye. Alderman Cicho Lopez. Aye. Alderman Molinado. Aye. Alderman Burnett. Aye. Alderman Irvin. Aye. Alderman Telefiero. Aye. Alderman Roboyas. Aye. Alderman Cardona. Aye. Alderman Wagaspak. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. Alderman Sanchez. Alderman Aye. Austin. Aye. Alderman Ramirez <clears throat> Rosa. Yeah. Alderman Villegas. Aye. Alderman Mitz. Alderman Mitz. Aye. Alderman Spazzano. Aye. Alderman Nugent. Alderman Nugent? Yes. Alderman Vasquez. Aye. Alderman Napolitano. Aye. Alderman Riley. Aye. Alderman Smith. Aye. Alderman Tubby. Aye. Alderman Gardner. Aye. Alderman Kappelman. Aye. Alderman Martin. Aye. Alderman Osterman. Aye. Alderman Haddon. Aye. Alderman Silverstein. Aye. Alderman Sedlowski Garza. Alderman Garza. Your Honor, there are 49 days, no nays. Alderman Thompson on the motion for reconsideration. Thank you, Madam President. I uh, motion that we reconsider the last vote. Uh -oh. Yay. Nay. Yay. Nay. Nay. No. 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 
the motion for reconsideration apparently fails. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the chair recognizes uh, Chairman Wagus back. Thank you, Madam President. Going back to item number one, this is an ordinance authorizing the issuance of up to $15 million in multifamily program funds and the execution of a funding loan agreement with Casa Veracruz LLC for the acquisition and redevelopment of 155 affordable housing units in various locations across the following wards, 15th, 22nd, 24, and 25. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on this matter, I move to concur with the recommendation of the committee on the previous vote, uh, most favorable vote of the committee. Roll call vote. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Thank you, Madam President. Item number two is an ordinance authorizing the restructure of a loan and the provision of a multifamily housing loan of up to $1 million and the provision of a multifamily housing loan to Heartland Phoenix House LLC to finance ongoing and future rehabilitation of the building located at 1251 South Sawyer Avenue. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on the matter, I move to concur with the recommendation of the committee by the, the first most favorable roll call vote. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam President, item number three is the appointment of Helene D. Gale as a member of the Chicago Community Catalyst Fund Board. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote, and if no one wishes to speak on the matter, I move to concur with the recommendation of the committee by the first roll call vote. And Chairman uh, Wagaspat, do you also uh, uh, want to uh, link this with the first um, motion for reconsideration as well? And the first uh, motion for reconsideration on item uh, number six. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hearing no objection, so ordered. One second, ma'am. Item number four is the appointment of Gloria Castillo as a member of the Chicago Community Catalyst Fund Board. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on this matter, I move to concur with the recommendation of the committee by roll call vote and the subsequent uh, motion to reconsider, fail a motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number five is the reappointment of Juan Carlos Avila as a member of the Chicago Community Catalyst Fund Board. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on the matter, move to concur with the recommendation of the committee by the first roll call vote and uh, subsequent failed motion to reconsider. Okay. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam President, item number seven is an ordinance authorizing the utilization of tax increment financing funds and corporate funds for the implementation of the Invest South West program. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on the matter, I move to concur with the recommendation of the committee by the roll call vote, first roll call vote, and the subsequent failed uh, motion to reconsider. The chair recognizes Alderman Urban. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, again, uh, the point for Invest Southwest I must reiterate uh, the exclusion of the community of Garfield Park uh, that's part of this program. Uh, Garfield Park is the heart of the west side of Chicago. And for this community to be excluded, I think is not in the best interest of the west side and of the city in its entirety. If Garfield Park rises, I believe the city of Chicago will rise right along with it. So uh, while I will support this because the communities of Austin, the communities of North Lawndale, and other communities on the west side are, are specifically noted, I must speak to the exclusion of Garfield Park in this, uh, in, in this endeavor. And I hope that the members of your staff and administration will take note of this and, and really put the dedicated and necessary resources in for the communities of East and West Garfield Park because they are the heart of the west side of Chicago. Thank you. Alderman Irvin, as you've raised this issue before, I will respond in kind, as I have. As you well know, as we've explained to you multiple times, this initial foray in Invest Southwest is a beginning, not an ending. 
um, and we chose uh, the communities um, after a lot of study and analysis. Uh, we are looking to build upon it um, as we move into implementing this first phase of the Best Southwest. Um, if there are no other comments, um, the chair Thank you, Madam President. The chair recognizes Alderman Cardenas. Th thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, and I echo, obviously, my colleague in, in terms of the Best Southwest. I want to add, and this is the second phase, you talked about the first phase, and that's great. Uh, um, in line of what's going on in, in Little Village and, and Barton Park, I want to make sure those communities are part of your second phase. And I just want to make that point, and, and obviously, for the record. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Anyone else? I don't believe any other members have uh, raised their hand to speak. So I'm going back to Chairman uh, Wagus back. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, President, I move passage by the first most favorable vote of the Committee on Finance and the subsequent mo unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Thank you. Uh, items A through 20 are all ordinances amending the expiration dates of certain TIFs to bring them into compliance with state law. The following TIFs are affected. Item eight through 20, it was the Woodlawn TIF, the Roosevelt Union TIF, Roosevelt Cicero TIF, Portage Park TIF, Jefferson Park Business District TIF, North Cicero TIF, Near North TIF, Coleman Arlington TIF, Clark Street and Ridge Avenue TIF, 11th Street, Kedzie Avenue, TIF. Excuse me, that's 11th Street, Kedzie Avenue Business District Plan. 79th Street Corridor, TIF. The Clark Montrose, TIF. And the Western and Ogden, TIF. I move passage, unless anyone wishes to speak on this, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam President, item number 21 is an ordinance amending chapters 3-43 and 3-44 of the Municipal Code of the City of Chicago regarding taxes on shipments of retail bottled water and alcoholic beverages from outside Chicago. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on this matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance Report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so order. Madam President, item 22 is an ordinance amending Chapter 4-156 of the Municipal Code of the City of Chicago regarding amusement tax and admission fees for tour boat operators. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on this matter, I'd like to move for passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance Report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so order. Item 23 is an ordinance amending Section 9-100-030B of the Municipal Code of the City of Chicago regarding vehicle parking, standing, or compliance violations. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on it, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance Report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Okay. Uh, the chair recognizes uh, Alderman Irvin. Just advise Alderman, if you want to speak, please raise your hand as quickly as possible so we can move expeditiously. Alderman Irvin. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, what's to be recorded is no on, the, on that uh, last ordinance. So reflected. Okay. Chairman Wang is back. Madam President, item 24 is an ordinance amending section 2-32-031 of the Municipal Code of the City of Chicago to authorize the Chief Financial Officer to procure an owner-controlled insurance program or OSIP insurance policy from for construction and operations at Chicago's airports. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. And if no one wishes to speak on this particular item, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance Report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. 
Madam President, item number 25 is regarding monthly settlements through the law department and will be placed on file with the clerk. Um, item number 26 will be held until further notice as the committee will not be issuing permits for solicitation while the city remains under stay in place orders. Items 27 and 28 consist of authorizations for the payment of very small claims against the city and denials of payments of very small claims against the city. If there is no objection, I ask that these items be placed on the omnibus. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam President, could you give me a second, please? Sure. Okay. Madam President, item 29A is an order authorizing the Corporation Council to enter into and execute a settlement in the case of Joanna Palmer as administrator of the estate of Ramella Palmer, deceased, versus City of Chicago. <clears throat> I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider with the exception that Alderman Lopez, Nugent, Spazzato, Quinn, Thompson, Moore, Gardner, Beal, Napolitano, and Cardona wish to be recorded as voting no on item 29A. And I'll pause for a second to see if anybody else would like to be recorded as voting no. There are no other uh, um Alderman wish to be recorded as voting no based upon raising their hand. So hearing no objection with those those vote no votes uh, noted, so ordered. Okay. Um, Madam President, this concludes the report of the Committee on Finance from last month. And thank you. Thank you, Chairman Wasteback. Um, next is the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development, Chairman Villegas. Madam President, members of the City Council reporting for the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development, which held the meeting on March 10th, 2020. Uh, the committee has a series of reports recommending passage of the following items. Items one through five are a series of appointments and reappointments to various special service areas. Uh, number one is Thompson Paspalas and Alexander Theoharis to SSA number 16 in the Greektown Hostet Commission. Wallace S. Anderson to SSA number 24, Clark Street Commission. Uh, Benetta Roy to SSA number 42, 71st Street Stony Commission. Uh, Mario Correa to SSA number 62, the Sauganosh Commission. I move passage of these items by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item six is a substitute ordinance for the designation of portions of East 95th Street Tax Increment Financing District and approval of tax allocation financing for redevelopment projects. I move passage of this item by the first table roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Item seven is a substitute ordinance for support of the Class L Tax Incentive for property at 226 West Jackson Boulevard. This item will, be, will not be reported out as instead being held until the applicants for the tax incentive has satisfactorily responded to request polls during committee uh, members' March meeting. So ordered. Uh, Madam President, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Villegas. The Committee on Environmental Protection and Energy, uh, Chairman Cardenas. Madam President and members of the City Council reporting for your Committee on Environmental Protection and Energy, which held a meeting on Thursday, March 12, 2020, to consider one item, a resolution 2019-746. A recommendation was made to pass, uh, which was concurred by a voice vote for all committee members with no dissenting votes. Uh, there is one uh, additional item that uh, I'd like to, for the council to, to know. 
Uh, on April 20th, Alderman Villegas did, however, invoke Rule 14 to formally recuse himself from voting on this item. And I do have in my possession a letter uh, written April 20, 2020. Uh, the states, please be advised that pursuant to City Council Rule 14 in Section 2 156 0806 B of the Municipal Code of Chicago, I invoke Rule 14 and have recused myself from participation in voting on the following record on the agenda on the City Council uh, in January 15, 2020. That concludes my report, Madam Chair. If there are no other questions, um, then I yield. Um, Chairman Cardenas, you need to move for a, a vote on the. I, I move passage. Uh, I'm sorry. I move passage with the, uh, with the, with the uh, last roll call vote of the finance committee. Point information. Can you please let the alderman finish? When you talk over each other, it's very difficult to understand. I'm going to ask Chairman Cardenas to repeat his motion. And then again, again, if you wish to speak, please raise your hand and identify yourself. Again, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Again, I will pass it over this item um, with the uh, uh, last purple vote on, on the Finance Committee, the first item, and his uh, reconsideration as well. <laughs> That concludes my report. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderman Moore. Thank you. Some have with my screen, but I hopefully I'm still there somehow. It's my screen. Um, I was just asking in, in, in the past when um, somebody had to um, recuse himself from a vote, it, it was I thought the new ordinance said he had to explain why. And in the past, I've always we've been hearing why. I didn't hear why. It, he had to recuse himself. Usually somebody says because somebody is a partner in a firm or something like that. And that and if that's not the case, then fine. But I thought that's what the ordinance that we passed stated. Uh, Madam President. Yes, uh, Chairman uh, Cardenas. Uh, I know this is out of order now since the item. I put in my remarks. Um, but if, if members of the body would like to know the explanation, obviously the letters in front of me, uh, and does state the reason for his uh, recusal. And if I may, uh, through, uh, through the chair, uh, able to, um, to read that, I'll do that. You can summarize it, uh, all of Chairman uh, Cardenas. Thank you. Uh, the letter does state that within the preceding 12 months, uh, I was a member of the consulting firm, this is Alderman Villegas, mind you, that worked for Niper Gas, a.k.a. Southern Company, you know, I have divested from the firm, I was not involved in this matter, and did not receive any income or compensation for this matter. Out of abundance of caution, I will abstain. Uh, that is the, the end of the letter. And should any questions uh, be, uh, uh, be raised, feel free to contact uh, Alderman Villegas at 773-931-1136. Thank you, Madam Chair, for, uh, uh, for indulging me. Thank you. Madam President, I'm sorry. Madam President, Alderman Garza, I'm sorry, my internet went out. I'd like to be recorded as a yes vote on the first um, meeting on the first vote on finance. So noted, Alderman Garza. Um, Arden, uh, Alderman uh, Cardenas' motion is to accept the uh, committee report uh, with the recusal, as noted. Um, if there are no further questions or objections, so ordered. All right, next is Committee on Housing and Real Estate, Chairman Osterman. Thank you, Madam President. And members of the City Council reporting for your Committee on Housing and Real Estate, which held a committee hearing uh, Friday, March 13th. Um, the committee has a series of reports recommending passage of the following. Item number one is a series of appointments and reappointments of the following committees. The Chicago Community Land Trust and the Chicago Low Income Housing Trust Fund Board. Um, a reappointment to the Chicago Community Land Trust Board is uh, Lisette Castaneda. Um, appointing to the Low Income Housing Trust Fund Board is Grace Chan McGibbon, Archelle Stevens, Emilio Carskello, Andrew Gear. Uh, reappointments to that board are Tom McNulty. David Wells, Deborah Bennett, and Wayne Gordon. And we'll pass into the, this ordinance by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and the Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. Thank you, Chairman Cardenas. Thank you, Chairman Cardenas. Thank you, Chairman Cardenas. Thank you, Chairman Cardenas. Thank you, Ch
Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item two is a license agreement between the Bucktown Community Organization uh, for installation of a mural on the exterior wall of the Bucktown Wicker Park Branch Library located in 1701 North Milwaukee in the 32nd Ward. I move past this item by the same motion if there is no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item three is the sale of Union Station air rights to Amtrak under the right of first offer agreement in conjunction with Amtrak, Chicago Union Station Head House and Union Station Transportation Center improvements in the 42nd Ward. I move past to this item by the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number four is the First Amendment to an Intergovernmental Agreement with the Board of Trustees for the Illinois, University of Illinois for continued occupancy of office spaces within city-owned building located at 641 West 63rd Street in the 20th Ward. I move past to this item by the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number five is the third agreement, a lease agreement with the Illinois Sports Facility Authority governing use of the property at 333, 333 Southwest um, 30th Street by the Chicago Police Department for driver training in the 11th Ward. I move past to this item, the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number six is the First Amendment of Lease Agreement with Vanguard Archives Holdings, Inc. for use of space within the building at 3920 South Michigan Avenue by the Chicago Police Department in the Third Ward. I move past to this item with the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. The final item, item, item number seven, is a lease agreement with the Chicago Board of Education for use of the former South Shore High School at 7601 7659 South Constance Avenue in the 8th Ward by the Chicago Police Department. I move pass it to this item with the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam President, this concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Chairman Mitz. Thank you, Madam President and members of the City Council. I'm reporting for the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. We held a meeting on March 11, 2020, to consider the following ordinance. Item number 02019-4125, a substitute ordinance to amend the municipal code regarding provision of horse drone carriage. Introduced by Alderman Hopkins, Roddy, Lopez, and others. Madam President, uh, I move that we, this item be passed regarding the item. Um, this order will be considered in recommendation of the License Committee by the same roll call as item number one on the Committee of Finance, with the exception of Alderman Dow and Alderman Miss voting no on this item in the same unsuccessful motion we consider if there's no objection. With those two caveats of the no votes, hearing no objection, so ordered. I'm trying to raise my hand. Oh. The chair recognizes all um all the more. Uh, thank you. No, thank you. Just want to be recorded as a no vote on that. Thank you. So noted. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishes to be heard on this particular item? If there would right. be no other, you see a hand? Um, Arm and Wait, one second. Just, uh, just one second, folks. We follow the same procedure. If you want to be heard, raise your hand beforehand. We're pausing before we do anything so we can be recorded. But once we vote, we vote and we move on. But for this record, Alderman Taylor is, is also noted as a no vote. Chairman Miss, does that conclude your report? That will conclude that part of the report. There are four ordinances um, regarding moratoriums and various wards. It was the 6th Ward, the 27th Ward, 43rd Ward and the 47th Ward. These recommendations were also concurred in by a voice vote of the members of the License Committee on March 11. Madam President, I move that the City Council concur in the recommendations 
of the license committee by the same roll call as item number one on the committee on finance and the same unsuccessful motion we consider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. That concludes my report for the committee on license and consumer protection. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Mitz. Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety, Chairman Burnett. Thank you, Madam President and members of, of the council. Uh, reporting for your Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety, for which the meeting was held on Thursday, March 12, 2020. Before the committee, there were 256 items. There were 239 routine traffic items that passed and 17 routine traffic items that did not pass. There was one item that passed an amendment of municipal code 7-38-117 by establishing mobile food vehicle stands on portions of North Franklin Street introduced by Alderman Brandon Rowley, 42nd Ward. If there is no objections, I move for the passage of these ordinances in the omnibus. That concludes my report. Thank you, Madam President. So ordered. And hearing no objections, so ordered. Uh, Committee on Transportation and Public Way, Chairman Brookins. Thank you, Madam President. Reporting for your Committee on Transportation and Public Way, a meeting which was held on March 9, 2020. The following ordinances were passed by a majority of the members present. Pages 2 through 22 include 246 ordinances for grants and privileges introduced by the local aldermen from wards 1 through 6, 8 through 15, 17, 19 through 23, 25 through 33, 35, 36, and 39 through 50. Page 23 includes nine ordinances for canopies introduced by local aldermen from wards 1, 2, 31, 32, 37, and 42. Pages 24 through 58 include 410 ordinances for sidewalk cafes introduced by local aldermen from wards 1 through 5, 11, 25 through 28, 31 through 33, and 38 through 45, uh, 49. Under Rule 14 of the Rules of Order and Procedure for the Chicago City Council, Alderman Tunney abstains from voting on the following item, a sidewalk cafe number 02020-1615 and 02020-1616, both are located in the 44th Ward. On pages 59 through 61, include 23 ordinances for miscellaneous items introduced by local aldermen from wards 2, 8, 11, 14, 26, 27, 30, 39, 42, 43, 45, 47, and 49. Page 62 includes the subdivision ordinance located in the ninth ward. Under Rule 14, of the Rules of Order and Procedure of the City of Chicago, Alderman Thompson abstains from voting on the following item, Subdivision 02020-1805, located in the 6th Ward. On page 63 includes two vacation ordinance and one transfer ordinance, located in the 6th, 24th, and 32nd Ward. If there's no objection, I move passage of these items by the last most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance and an associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Chair recognizes Alderman Moore. Thank you, Madam President. And, and, and in all fairness, I mean, if it's in our ordinance, and again, every other city council meeting, we've done it. If it's not the case, then fine, but I don't want any favoritism. If, if we're going to be, people are going to be, um, recusing himself, we have to state the reason because I recall the ordinance stating that. So I just want to be consistent because we've done it with other people and I just want to be consistent with the ordinance. So, so I think Thompson uh, recused himself on some, so I think the, the reason should be stated if that's stated in the ordinance. 
Thank you, Madam uh, President. So in an abundance of caution, since Alderman and Tunney is a restaurant tour and these are restaurants in his ward to avoid the appearance of an impropriety, he's recusing himself. With respect to Alderman and Thompson, either he or a member of his firm is a representative, a member, uh, uh, someone associated with the uh, or with the subdivision ordinance. So, uh, Alderman uh, Brookings, I believe that you um, have a motion. All right. So, if there's no further objection, I move passage of these items with the last most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance and the uh, associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Thank you, Madam uh, President. That concludes my report. And uh, Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards, Chairman Tunney. Madam President and members of the City Council, presenting a series of reports for your Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards, which held a meeting on March 16, 2020. These reports are grouped for convenience. The following items were passed by a majority of the members present. Page one contains the amendment of Municipal Code Chapters 1710 and 1717 by adding new sections, that being 1710, 1001, and 1717-0251.5 concerning electric vehicles and electric vehicle supply equipment. I hereby move passage of this item by the last most favorable roll call vote of the Finance Committee report and un associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections to order. Page one contains the amendment of the Chicago Sustainable Development Policy to prioritize bird collision deterrence strategies for building projects to reduce avian mortality and injury. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objections, so order. Page one contains the amendment of the Municipal Code Section 1364 dash 150 to further regulate standards for installation of smoke alarms and smoke detectors, which passed by a roll call vote of nine to three. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there is no objection, noting that all of Mattel Fiaro would like to be recorded as voting no on this matter. The chair recognizes Alderman Moore. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I would also like to be recorded as a note and also just as a um, point. Um, this was brought up in committee with none of our um, representation from the Chicago Fire Department from whom I understand uh, um, opposed this. It was um, unfortunate and a little embarrassing that the firemen from another um, municipality had to come in and um, testify. And for me, our firefighters, as we're dealing with this pandemic, we're trusting in those subject matter experts. The firemen in our community, in our fire department, our leadership there are our subject matter experts and going in every day saving lives. And uh, for whatever reasons um, that they're opposed to this, I have to side with those. Um, subject matter experts, and I wish they would have had the opportunity to come before the committee and um, speak to us. So without me having the support of the fire um, the department on an issue um, that is related to them, I, I cannot support um, this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman Beal. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I, too, wanted to join on a no vote on this particular ordinance. Uh, I was in committee, and the Fire chief was not informed about this hearing, and the fire department is not in support of uh, the smoke detector ordinance. And I think it's really disheartening that the department that we rely on on a day-to-day -day basis was not number one informed, and then number two does not support this particular ordinance. And lastly, this ordinance is going to add an undue burden on our taxpayers and our senior citizens who are already struggling to make ends meet. And now we want to require them to uh, purchase smoke detectors that are much more expensive, batteries that are much more expensive, 
And I just think we're doing ourselves a disservice by putting this ordinance in and putting those extra burdens on the senior citizens, especially in this crisis. Thank you, Madam President. The chair recognizes Alderman Lopez. Thank you, Madam President. I too wish to rise, virtually rise in opposition of this ordinance. Um, building on what my colleagues have previously mentioned, um, but also concerned that, as we've seen during this pandemic, we are continuing to talk to our communities, believing that they're at a particular point, but not seeing where they truly are, and then asking them to meet the standards listed in this municipal ordinance is an un unacceptable burden on many of the black and brown communities, not only that I represent, but that exist throughout the city of Chicago. And we must rethink this. We should have put the pause on this when our own fire department was not participating or supporting of this. And I think it's a mistake to proceed forward with it today. And I would urge all of my colleagues to vote no on this matter. Thank you, Madam President. The chair recognizes Alderman Austin. Thank you, Madam President. I too uh, oppose this ordinance. I have to speak to you with our commissioner in regards to it, as Alderman Neal has already stated. I see this as being an additional burden on the city as well as taxpayer, because when they attempt to purchase it, it will cost more than those that are in place now uh, and are given out by the fire department. So I would like it to be recorded if there's voting no one side. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman Irvin. You're muted, sir. You're still muted. Sound good, though. <laughs> Why don't we come back to you while you figure out the technical problems? I'm going to go to Alderman Curtis and then we'll come back to you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, too, my sentiments are the same. Uh, I'm voting no on this item. I don't feel that, uh, especially our senior population, will be able to uh, afford um, uh, a 10 year uh, smoke detector. So I'll be voting no on this item also. Thank you. Alderman Irving, can we try again? <clears throat> you're still, you're still muted for some reason. Now you're unmuted. The chair recognizes, the chair recognizes Alderman Viegas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this was tough, but you know, this, is, this has been something that we've been working on for quite some time. And the reality is that back in 2017, uh, the General Assembly uh, passed the state legislation that uh, required every dwelling to have this 10-year ten -year battery. Chicago was exempted. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Chicago to get into this legislation and follow suit. The, the reason I, I allowed for time uh, for this to come to com compliance, uh, 2023 is when this actually comes to compliance. And I would also add that most smoke detectors last 10 years. And so if you purchase a smoke detector, once that shelf life is expired, that's when you have to go from the old technology into the new technology. The fact that you have uh, these, fires that have, these fires that have killed people, uh, not because of the fire, but more because of the smoke inhalation, is, is, is based on the fact that there's not working smoke detection. Because just as we're supposed to uh, make sure that we change the batteries twice a year, a lot of times life happens and people forget this is a life saving uh, um, smoke detector that will, will, will last for 10 years has the technology and the capability of reminding you when your when your smoke detector is going to to run out and when it's time to change it. This is just this all this is is just a upgrade uh, with technology, and I would ask for a favorable consideration on this. The chair recognizes Alderman Scott. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to be recorded as no one's vote as well. In, in the committee vote? Yes, yes please. please. Okay. And it, it, yes. so noted. The chair recognizes all the minutes. All the minutes you need to unmute yourself. There you go. Madam Chairman, um, I'm hearing the, the debate and I'd like to record it as a note over on this side. So noted. Hello. Hello. All right, all the are behind. Oh, thank you. Uh, you didn't mute me, did you? Um, oh, with all of this that's going on, it seems as if uh, I wanted to make a motion to refer this back to the zoning committee. Because there seems to be a lot of misinformation or a lack of understanding. So I'll put a motion to return this back to the zoning committee. Second. 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 The, the, the motion, motion on the floor is to matter. Back to the, uh, the zoning committee. I assume all of them you're asking for a roll call vote. If it's necessary, if it's necessary, if it's necessary, if Madam Chair, this is all in the All of them in the Vegas. Madam Chair, I'd like, like to go ahead and just return back to the zone so that we can continue the dialogue. All right. This, here we Call for a roll call. So based on, based on, on order, 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 please. I, as I understand <laughs> your, uh, Alderman uh, Irvin has asked for this return uh, to the zoning committee. Alderman Villegas is the sponsor. Has said no objections. Is that, is that correct, Alderman Villegas? Yeah, yeah, Madam President. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I move that we uh, hold this in committee. Second. No, so the motion is uh, for Chairman Tunney to hold the ordinance on the smoke detectors in committee. Uh, I would uh, I would withdraw my motion, my motion for his for his uh, further hearings, not just hearings, being held, but being further held, hearings. Further hearings. Is that agreeable, Chairman Tony? Accept that. Uh, accept that. Uh, amend that. Amend that. Yes, uh, Ben. Uh, ben will hold uh, hold further hearing on this for the committee, not just hold it in this. We will have a committee hearing on it on this item. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Okay. Um. Alderman Tony. <laughs> Back to the committee report, pages one through 10 contain various map amendments in the 48th, 47th, 45th, 44th, 42nd, the 40th, 38th, 35th, 36th, 37th, 31st, 27th, 26th, 25th, 23rd, 21st, the 20th, 14th, 11th, 6th, 5th, 3rd, and 1st wards. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there is no objection, noting that on document number 02020-153 for the property uh, commonly known as 3615 through 3659 South Halsted Street, Alderman Thompson has abstained from voting under provisions of rule 14. And Chairman Tony, because I expect a uh... Alderman Moore to ask for the explanation. Can you provide the basis for the Rule 14 recusal? Madam President, I believe he has an ownership interest in the properties and therefore uh, needed to recuse himself. And I think his ward office is in there. Oh, Madam President? Yes, Alderman Thompson. Thank you. I, I really did try to again. I, I actually, I, I do not have an ownership interest the property, the subject property is owned by the 11th Ward Democratic Party. And as a, uh, out of an abundance of caution, um, I'm abstaining from voting on this particular matter. The zoning changed from a C district to the B district. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman Thompson, for that clarification. Alderman Tunney? Thank you, um, Alderman Thompson, also. 
Uh, page 10 contains various large signs over 100 square feet in area, 24 feet above grade in the 45th, the 44th, the 42nd, the 41st, 39th, 27th, 25th, 20th, 30th. If, if I can interrupt, I think we need to vote on the previous item and before you move forward. All right, so I'll renew my uh, motion on uh, on that item by the last most favorable roll call vote of finance and the uh, unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, let me start again on page 10. Can vary, contains various large signs over 100 square feet in area, 24 feet above grade in the 45th, the 44th, the 42nd, the 41st, the 39th, the 27th, the 25th, 20th, 13th, 11th, and 2nd wards. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there is no objection. No objection, so ordered. And page 11 contains two historical landmark designations in the 42nd and 3rd ward. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there is no objection with the exception of document number 02020-743, the historical landmark designation for 226 West Jackson, which is being held at the request of the applicant and committee. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Madam President, that concludes my report. That concludes the committee reports. Agreed calendar, Chairman Harris. Thank you, Madam President. I received from the city clerk, Anna M. Valencia, a total of 98 items proposed for the agreed uh, calendar consisting of congratulatory, commemorative, and tributary resolutions for the following aldermen and Clerk Valencia. Uh, clerk Valencia, Alderman Thompson, Alderman Quinn, Alderman Burke, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Curtis, Alderman Brookins, Alderman, Her Alderman Austin, Alderman Mitz, Alderman Nugent, Alderman Tunney, and Alderman Gardner. Um, hearing, I move passage of the agreed calendar in the omnibus, please. Hearing no objections, so ordered. On new business, the clerk will call the wards beginning with the first. Claims, free permits, licensee exemptions, which are referred to the Committee on Finance. Zoning amendments, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Can't hear them. Traffic regulations, traffic control signals, and traffic signs, which are referred to the Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety. Grants of privilege on and over the public way, which are referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Exemption for physical barrier requirement for commercial driveway alley access for parking facilities, which are referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alderman Lespie has a proposed resolution to call for Governor J.B. Pritzker and the Illinois State Legislature to enact tax increment financing to support small businesses during state of Illinois disaster proclamations, which is referred to the Committee on Economic, Capital, and Technology Development. Alderman Hopkins has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 7-28-785 to further regulate requirements for installation and maintenance of collection bins, which are referred to the license and consumer protection. Alderman Hopkins also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code titles 4 and 8 concerning fines for violations of outdoor patio regulation, which are referred to the license and consumer protection. Alderman Hopkins also has a proposed resolution to call for week of May 17th through the 23rd, 2020, as National Public Works Week, which is referred to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Alderman Hopkins and Alderman Viesquez have a proposed resolution to call for Governor J.B. Pritzker and Mayor Lori Lightfoot to issue executive orders to ensure confirmation of residential and commercial garbage and recycling services during COVID-19 pandemic which is referred to as environmental protection and energy. Alderman Dow has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for sign signboards, which are referred to as zoning, landmarks, and building standards. Alderman King has proposed orders for amendment of municipal code chapter 2-8 by adding new section 2-8-015 requiring city council approval for legislation during disaster, declared disaster, which is referred to as ethics and government oversight. 
Um, Ms. Sawyer and Alderman King have a proposed resolution calling for hearings on the impact of proposed merger of Advocate Trinity Hospital, Mercy Hospital, and Medical Center, South Shore Hospital, and St. Bernard Hospital, which is referred to me on health and human relations. Alderman Sawyer and others have a proposed resolution to call for Mary Lor call for Mayor Lori Lightfoot to publicly endorse reform to the police union collective bargaining agreements, which is Here's referred to which is referred to the Committee on Workforce Development. Um, the deal has a proposed resolution call for hearings on Mayoral Executive Order 2020-1 regarding contract executions, reallocation of appropriated funds, and temporary agreements for use and occupancy of real estate, which is referred to the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations. Um, the Sedlowski Guards and others have a proposed resolution to call for House Speaker Michael Manigan, Senate President Don Harmon, and the members of the Illinois General Assembly to, to place SJRCA number 23, the Workers' Rights Amendment, on a November 3, 2020 State of Illinois General Election ballot, which is referred to the Committee on Workforce Development. Alman um, Garza and others also have a proposed resolution to call on the Illinois General Assembly to place HJRCA 37, the Workers' Rights Amendment, on the November 3, 2020 General Election ballot, which is referred to the Committee on Workforce Development. Alvin Thompson has proposed ordinance for approval of a plan of Liberty resubdivision, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alvin Thompson also has a proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 2477 South Archer Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alvin Cardenas has proposed ordinance for amendment of the municipal code, Chapter 11-4, by modifying a Section 11-4-360 and adding new section 11-4-365 concerning enforcement of inspections and violations of environmental regulations, which is referred to me on environmental protection and energy. Um, the also has proposed orders for amendment of municipal code section 17-13-0905C to further regulate special uses within planned manufacturing districts, which is referred to me on zoning, landmarks, and building standards. Um, Congress also has a proposed resolution to call for hearings to explore possible options for establishing free broadline internet for all households in the city of Chicago, which is referred to as economic, capital, and technology development. Um, Alvin Quinn has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, Title IV, by modifying various sections to prohibit the advertising, listing, renting, or booking of vacation rentals within restricted residential zones and establishing fines related for violations thereof which is referred to me on basis and consumer protection. Alvin Quinn, also, Alvin Quinn also has a proposed ordinance to call for a 90-day signature collection period for restricted residential zones for new or additional shared housing units or vacation rentals be told for duration of mayoral executive order 2020-10, which is referred to me on license and consumer protection. Alvin Burke and others have a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 3-8-050 to recognize deaths of Chicago police officers, fire Mr. Clerk. Clerk. Yes. I'd like to, uh, to be preferred to finance. Which matter was, which matter was that, Alderman? Uh, that would be Alderman Burke. Two committees being called. The Committee on Public Safety and the Committee on Finance, the matter is referred to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Alderman Lopez has a proposed resolution for a member of a resolution establishing membership of the Committee on Budget and Government Operations, which is referred to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Alderman Lopez also has a proposed resolution to call for Chicago Housing Authority to accept and adopt waivers and updates issued under the Federal CARES Act. Which is referred to the housing and real estate. Alvin Lopez and others have a proposed ordinance for amendment of the municipal code, Title III, by adding new chapter 3 10 entitled Essential Municipal Employees Death Benefit Act, which is referred to the on finance. Alvin Coleman has a proposed ordinance to call for establishment of a public private fund to assist in installation and maintenance of hand sanitizing stations in government commercial and residential facilities, which is referred to me on health and human relations. Alvin O'Shea has a proposed ordinance for vacation of public alleys adjacent to 11303 through 11305 South Spalding Avenue, which is referred to me on transportation and public way. 
Um, the Brookings has a proposed resolution to call for the Chicago Board of Education to convey ownership of a property located at 8131 South Main Street to the Public Building Commission to facilitate sale of property to Carroll Properties for residential development, which is referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Alderman Brookings has proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 8522 South Lafayette Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alderman Rodriguez has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at various locations, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alderman DeBaris has proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 4354 West 63rd Street which is referred to me as zoning, landmarks, and building standards. Alderman Burnett has proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 4-60-022, to allow additional alcohol and liquor licenses on a portion of West Lake Street, which is referred to me as license and consumer protection. Alderman Burnett has proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 4-60-022, to allow additional alcohol and liquor licenses on a portion of North Morgan Street, which is referred to me on license and consumer protection. Alderman Burnett also has proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-023 to allow additional packages of licenses on a portion of North Wall Street, which is referred to me on license and consumer protection. Um, Alderman Burnett has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to me on zoning, landmarks, and building standards. Alderman Burnett also has a proposed ordinance for the vacation of the public alleys in the area owned by West Kinsey Street, North Peoria Street, Swyman Street, and North Sangor Street, which is referred to me as transportation and public way. Alderman Braggs Tech has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, chapter 4 8, by adding new section 4 8 300 to regulate third party food delivery services, which is referred to a joint committee. Of the Committee on Finance and the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Rules. Mr. Clark, rules. Rules. Two committees have been called. The matter is referred to the Committee on Rules. All the Wags Act has proposed orders for the issuance of the permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on License, or Landmarks Only, Landmarks and Building Standards. All the Wags Act and all the Cardinals have a proposed resolution. In celebration of Earth Day and the call on Governor J.B. Pritzker to support local farmers, farmers markets, and nurseries to provide economic security to local producers and ensure that Illinoisans have increased access to affordable and sustainable food during the COVID-19 pandemic, which is referred to the Committee on Environmental Protection and Energy. All the Ramirez Rosa and others have a proposed order to call for Chicago Budget Director to identify COVID-19 impacted special events outdoor activities and festivals, and draft ordinance amending the 2020 annual appropriation ordinance to reappropriate funds for these events to Chicago's COVID-19 housing assistance plan, which is referred to the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations. Finance. Two committees have been called, being called. The matter is referred to the Committee on Committees, Rules, and Ethics. Alderman Diaz has a proposed ordinance to call for the Department of the Planning and Development Commissioner to update Cook County Tax Incentive Application Criteria for city approval of all project to date utilization, projected utilization for property owners within certain business enterprise classifications, which is referred to the Committee on Economic, Capital, and Technology Development. Alderman Diaz has a proposed resolution to call for the United States Congress to enact. And fund National Water Affordability Program model after low income home energy assistance program, which is referred to the Committee on Economic, Capital, and Technology Development. All in this title has proposed orders for amendment of municipal code, section 4 60 023, to allow additional packages of licenses on a portion of West Irving Park Road, which is referred to me on license and consumer protection. Um, on the has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, chapter 2 152, by adding new section 2 152 105, requiring safety and protective equipment to be provided to persons employed or contracted to do work in the city of Chicago during disasters, which is referred to the Committee on Health and Human Relations. 
Um, I'm going to ask guys and others to have a proposed resolution to call for Governor J.D. Pritzker to exercise emergency authority to cap excessive fees and surcharges to restaurants by third-party delivery apps and bring aid and relief to restaurants burdened by stay-at-home order, which is referred to a joint committee of the Committee on Finance and the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. All the baskets and others also have a proposed ordinance for amendment of the municipal code, chapter 4 4, by adding a new section 4 4 311, requiring licensed businesses to comply with emergency procedures issued by Governor of Illinois and Mayor of the City of Chicago during declared disasters or emergency operations, which is referred to Committee on Health and Human Relations. All the Napolitano has a proposed order for the issuance of permits for science. I wish to be recognized. Okay, Madam Chair, I'd like to introduce an additional ordinance to establish a new section 2 8 015 of the Municipal Code to be assigned to the Committee on Health and Relations. Um, Alderman, you're out of order. As you are well aware, uh, the clerk's office has a requirement that any ordinances must be posted 48 hours. Uh, prior to uh, the council meeting. Point of order, uh, ordinance has not been posted in that time period. I'm really out of order. Sure, point of order, uh, individual items only need to be listed on an agenda 48 hours in advance if a final action is to be taken at a meeting. Introduction is not a final action. And we are at the presentation by all of section of the agenda. I, I, I disagree with uh, your reading of the clerk's rules. I deny the motion. Mr. Clark, please proceed. Okay. okay. Point of order, Madam President. Oliver Lopez. Oliver Lopez. Thank, Thank you, Madam President. President. I believe uh, Alderman and Vasquez has asked to appeal the decision of the chair on the matter of whether or not this was an out of order. If this was, in fact, out of order. I, I, I did, did not hear Alderman Vasquez say that. I did, I did in fact say that, Madam Chair. Mr. Clark? Mr. Clark, Clark please, please proceed. proceed. All of the Napolitano has proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed sign boards at 8755 West Hayden's Road, which is referred to the zoning, landmarks, and building standards. Alderman Riley has a proposed order for amendment of the municipal code, section 4 244 140, to prohibit the penalty in certain areas of the 42nd ward, which is referred to being licensed and consumer protection. Alderman Riley has a proposed order for amendment of the municipal code, section 4 60 130, concerning hours of operation for outdoor patio establishments within the central business district, which is referred to being licensed and consumer protection. Alderman Riley also has proposed orders for the issue of permits for sign signboards, which are referred to in zoning, landmarks, and building standards. And proposed orders for transfer of funds within the City Council's Legislative Reference Bureau for the year 2020, which is referred to in the budget and government operations. Alderman Riley also has proposed orders for vacation of East Bellevue Place between North State Street and Northwest Street, which is referred to in transportation and public way. Alderman Smith has proposed orders for an honorary street designation as honorary John Fine Way, which is referred to in transportation and public way. Alderman Smith and others have proposed a resolution to call for hearings on juvenile intervention and, and support centers operations, which is referred to a joint committee comprised of the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations, Committee on Ethics and Government Oversight, and the Committee on Public Safety. Alderman Smith and others have proposed orders requiring any individual over the age of two to cover their nose and mouth with masks or cloth face covering when in public places, which is referred to in health and human relations. Rules. The committee is being called. The matter is referred to the committee on committees, rules, and committees and rules. Alderman Kaplan and Alderman Osterman have a proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as honorary Sullen Long Way, which is referred to committee on transportation and public way. Alderman Martin has a proposed order for the issuance of permit to sign signboards at 4772 North Lincoln Avenue, which is referred to committee on zoning, landmarks, and building standards. Alderman Martin and others have a proposed resolution to call for Governor J.D. Pritzker to secure mortgage forbearance 
waiver of mortgage-related late fees, and a commitment to refrain from reporting late payments to credit reporting agencies for non-federal lenders and servicers of residential mortgages, which is referred to me as housing and real estate. Finance rules, rules. The committee's been called. The matter is referred to the committee on committees and rules. Alderman Martin and others also have a proposed ordinance to call for rent relief protection for renters who lost income during the COVID-19 stay-at-home order, which is referred to the committee on housing and real estate. Budget. I ask. Two committees have three committees have been called. The committee on Housing, budget, and finance, the matter is referred to the committee on committee. Point of information. Point of information is all in Rosa. Who called the separate committees? I called budget. Durant called budget. Okay, thank you. Who called finance for the record? Riley called finance. All right, thank you. Alderman Hand has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 7-20 by adding new section 7-20-121 to establish regulations for senior buildings during public health emergencies, which is referred to Committee on Health and Human Relations. That concludes the call of the wards. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Alderman Mitchell for approval of the journals. Thank you, Madam President. I'm not aware of any correction. I move to approve the journals for February 19, 2020, March 18, 2020, uh, April 15, 2020, and April 22, 2020. Hello. Yes. Thank you, Alderman Mitchell. Uh, will the alderman please make sure their uh, microphones are muted? All those in favor of approving the journals, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. The motion is carried. Finished business. Alderman Mitchell. Uh, miscellaneous business. Uh, miscellaneous business. Alderman Mitchell. <laughs> Madam President, I'm not aware of any other miscellaneous business. Pardon me. Alderman Lopez. The chair recognizes Alderman Lopez. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Madam President. Um, and in accordance with Rule 13, I'd like to invoke my right for personal privilege at this time. What is the nature of your, uh, your motion, sir? As it states in the rules, this allows me the opportunity to discuss when matters of a member's integrity, character, or motives have been assailed, questioned, or impugned. I wish to address that matter at this time. And sir, during the course of this proceeding, how has your integrity been assailed? Madam President, that is not up for debate. It is my right for our rules and procedures to invoke this at this time. I believe that you have to have a basis within the um, the confines of this meeting, and you have to articulate that. Otherwise, I'm going to rule your motion out of order. It is not according to our rules, as I quote, the right of a member to address the council on a question of personal privilege shall be limited to cases in which his integrity, character, or motives are assailed, questioned, or impugned. It does not say it has to be in this meeting. It has to be on topic of which I have a topic. So I am invoking my right to address that here in this body because my reputation, as well as reputation and character of several members of this body have been impugned, and I demand my right per our rules to address this matter publicly. You are out of order because they weren't done here. I'm sorry, who's, who's speaking? That's all right, Austin. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I'm, 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 I'm questioning in regards to Alderman uh, Lopez in regards to his, his he and several others' rights being in a few, but were they done in this body? And I believe that uh, based upon the previous question I asked, the answer was no. And the rules do not require it to be as such, Madam President. It does not state that it has to be in chamber. 
which is why I'm going to roll you out of order. Then I appeal the decision of the chair to the body. The question before the body is whether or not Alderman Lopez is out of order. Uh, the ruling of the chair is that Rule 13 applies to issues that are raised in the context of a proceeding before the body. All right. those. As a roll call, please. All those in favor of sustaining the ruling of the chair signify by saying aye. As a roll call, aye. 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 roll call, roll call, Madam President. President. No. no. This is all on another level. Can I get a clarification from the department area? <laughs> Madam President, I ask for roll call on your on the appeal. This is all on another level. Can I get a point of order? Can I get a clarification from the department area on this on that rule? Madam President, President, there is no parliamentary. I, I have, um, in response to Alderman Maldonado's um, request, I confer with the parliamentarian, and he concurs with my interpretation of Rule 13. Alderman Lopez has asked for a roll call vote on the ruling of the chair, uh, which is that his order, um, his motion uh, on Rule 13 is out of order because he has not identified any way in which during the course of this proceeding, his or anyone else's integrity was impugned. So, a yes vote is sustaining the ruling of the chair. Not. Move on. Um, all of, uh, Mr. Clark, can you please call the roll? Alderman Masada. Nay. Alderman Hopkins. Aye. Alderman Dowell. Alderman Dye. Aye. Alderman McCain. Yes. Alderman Harrison. Alderman Harrison. Alderman Sawyer. No. Oh, was that Alderman Harrison? Yes, yes, it was. Alderman Harrison votes no. Alderman Sawyer. Uh, no. Alderman Sawyer votes no. Alderman Mitchell. Uh, oh, yeah. Alderman Harris. Aye. Alderman McGill. No. Alderman Sebastian Garza. Aye. Alderman Thompson. Aye. Alderman Cardenas. Aye. Alderman Quinn. Aye. Alderman Burke. Um. Alderman Lopez. Uh, no. Alderman Coleman. No. Alderman Moore. Alderman Moore. Alderman Moore. Alderman Curtis. Alderman Curtis. Alderman O'Shea. Hi. Alderman Taylor. No. Alderman Brookins. Aye. Is that I, Alderman Brookins? Yeah. Alderman Rodriguez. Aye. Alderman Tavares. Aye. Alderman Scott. Aye. Alderman Cicho Lopez. No. Alderman Molinado. Aye. Alderman Burnett. Aye. Alderman Urban. Aye. Alderman Talfiero. Aye. Alderman Arboyas. Aye. Alderman Cardona. Aye. Alderman Wagaspak. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. No. Alderman Austin. Aye. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. No. Alderman Villegas. Aye. Alderman Miss. Alderman Miss. Alderman Cesaro. Yes. Alderman Nugent. Alderman Miss, I. 
Alderman Nugent. Yes. <clears throat> Alderman Vasquez. No. Alderman Napolitano. Aye. Alderman Riley. Aye. Alderman Smith. Aye. Alderman Tunney. Aye. Alderman Gardner. Aye. Alderman Kappelman. Aye. 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 Alderman Osterman. Aye. Alderman Hatton. No. Alderman Silverstein. Aye. Alderman, Alderman Moore. Alderman Curtis. You're under our 35 days and 13 days. The, the, the ruling, ruling of the chair is sustained. Alderman Mitchell, I believe that we were in the um, midst of miscellaneous business, so let's go back there. Um, not aware of the miscellaneous business. At the date time of the next meeting, Alderman Mitchell. I the department is the clerk. The date time of the next meeting is city shop. Yes. 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 Who's speaking, please? Madam Chair, it's Alderman Vasquez. Yes, Alderman Vasquez. Madam Chair, I move to amend the ordinance before the council by striking out the date currently listed and replacing it with May 6, 2020. Alderman Harris, Alderman Harris, Alderman Vasquez is added. Point of clarification. Point of clarification. Is this Alderman Vasquez? Yes, this is Alderman Vasquez. Please proceed, sir. Sir, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm moving, moving to, to, to move the um, schedule up sooner so that as the council can move an operating during a crisis to be able to come up. I don't think that's a point of clarification. It is now. So it's a point of clarification. The point of clarification is the laying of the table a vote to not allow public debate on that matter. Yes. Alderman Harris? I move to lay it on the table. So that is what it means if somebody votes. To lay it on the table, they're saying they don't want to debate on having a closer council meeting, correct? Uh, Alderman uh, Vasquez, the motion is laid on the table. The motion has the effect of not allowing the amendment um, at this time. The, the motion is laid on the table. All in favor of laying it on the table, signify, signify by saying aye. 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 May. Roll call. Roll call, please. Alderman, and I know some of you are new and don't know the rules. But I'm not new. Roll call. Say, once say, and some of you just don't know the rules. Once a motion has been made and we're voting, voting. But out of deference to the body, we will allow for another roll call vote. Yeah, I would like thank you. This is not a chair. Alderman Vasquez, you are out of order. We are doing a roll call vote. This is not a debate. I request ongoing commentary. I am in favor of the roll call. I am motion for personal privilege. I am being impugned as you're saying I'm you, and that is not why I'm asking for this. Mr. Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Please. Alderman Lasada. And just to clarify, um, the, the motion on the table is laid on the table to disallow the amendment offered by Alderman uh, Vasquez. All those who motion to lay it on the table, you will vote yes. All those opposed to the lay it on the table motion by Chairman Harris will vote no. Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Alderman Lasada. No. Alderman Hopkins. No. Alderman Dowell. Aye. Alderman McCain. No. Alderman Harrison. Alderman Harrison. I think you know what the fuck I'm going to vote. No. Alderman Harrison is no. 
Alderman Sawyer. Alderman Sawyer. No. No. Alderman Mitchell. No. Alderman Mitchell is I. Alderman Mitchell. Yeah. Alderman Harris. Aye. Alderman Beal. No. Alderman Sedlowski Garza. Aye. Alderman Thompson. Aye. Alderman Carbonis. Alderman Quinn. Aye. Alderman Burke. No. Alderman Lopez. Uh, no. Alderman Coleman. No. Alderman Moore. Alderman Moore. Alderman Curtis. Alderman Curtis. Alderman O'Shea. Aye. Alderman Taylor. No. Alderman Brookins. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez. No. Alderman Cabarrus. Aye. Alderman Scott. Aye. Alderman Cicho Lopez. No. Alderman Maldonado. No. Alderman Burnett. Aye. Alderman Irvin. No. Alderman Telefiero. Aye. Alderman Raboyas. Aye. Alderman Cardona. No. Alderman Wagspack. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. No. Alderman Austin. Aye. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. No. Alderman, Alderman Villegas. Aye. Alderman Cardinal is what's up. Please wait until we finish the roll. Alderman Mitz. Aye. Alderman Spazzato. Yes. Alderman Nugent. Yes. Alderman Vasquez. No. Alderman Napolitano. Aye. Alderman Riley. Aye. Alderman Smith. Alderman Smith. Alderman Tony. Aye. Alderman Gardner. Aye. Alderman Kaplan. Aye. Alderman Martin. No. Alderman Osterman. Aye. Alderman Hedden. No. Alderman Silverstein. No. Did you get my vote? I'm going to go through the order again, Alderman. Alderman Curtis. Alderman David Moore. Alderman Smith. No. Alderman Smith, are you no? No. Is there anyone else who needs to be recorded? Alderman Cardenas. I said yes. yes. Your Honor, there are 26 yeas, 21 nays. The uh, motion to sustain, uh, to uh, lay on the table, um, is sustained. Alderman Mitchell? Oh. Um, oh. Uh, you have an ordinance for the, uh, setting the date and time of the next uh, meeting? I provided an order to the clerk that in dating time of the next meeting of the city council for Wednesday, May 20th, 2020, at 10 a.m. Mr. Clerk, please read the ordinance. Be ordained by the city council of the city of Chicago, section one, in accordance with Illinois Executive Order 2020 7, 
The next regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Chicago shall be conducted by video conference on Wednesday, the 20th day of May, 2020, beginning at 10 o'clock a.m., and shall provide for remote participation and remote viewing by members of the public. Section 2, this order shall take effect and be enforced from and after its passage. All I'm sorry, I'm going to pass it to the honorables. Madam President, that would require a vote off from Alderman Lopez. I'm sorry, Alderman Lopez. Can you please repeat Forgive me, Madam President, as a point of order that I told you to require a vote off from I apologize, Alderman Lopez. You have a lot of reverb, and so I'm having a difficult time hearing you. Can you try it one more time? Yes, I'll try it again. Uh, as a point of order, that motion requires a vote. I believe. What motion? The mo the ordinance the the motion to approve the ordinance setting the date and time for the next meeting requires an actual vote. I believe that Alderman Alder, uh, Alderman Mitchell moved for passage of this in the omnibus, at which time there will be a vote. I think no, generally we've done this by. Hearing no objection to putting this in the omnibus, so ordered. I object. Madam President. There's been plenty of objections to this, Madam President, which is why I mentioned that. Well, no, no, Alderman Lopez, you. Oh, this is a formal change. Alderman Lopez, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. 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 Thank you, Madam so that in fairness, we are all being treated equally as how we're being addressed as aldermen. Because if you didn't hear it, the world just heard what one of our colleagues called this meeting right now. And it wasn't a crap show. And I would expect nothing less having been berated for saying something highly less earlier in the week. Are you finished, Alderman? Waiting for you, President. <laughs> I believe someone called for a roll call vote on the ordinance for setting the date and time of the next meeting. Who is that? Please identify yourself for the record. Alderman Bass has called for a roll call. Mr. Clerk, please call a roll call vote on setting the date and time. Madam uh, President, Madam President, Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Sir, may, may, I, would, may, I, would, I would appreciate, I would appreciate, let me finish before you interrupt, because it's very difficult on a, on a virtual city council meeting. Then you can, I will call on you and you can talk to your heart's delight. <laughs> okay, let me finish. There's a, there was a request by Alderman Lopez for a roll call vote. Alderman Rosa, do you wish to be heard on Alderman Lopez yes. for a roll call Yes, vote? thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We are in the midst of a crisis. So I'm going to be speaking on this measure to set the next date of our meeting. This measure to set the next date for our meeting will set the meeting for the end of May, for May 20th. We just saw a very close vote to attempt to set the meeting to an earlier date at May 6th. And I was very disappointed to see that 26 of my colleagues voted to stop this measure from moving forward. There are so many families that are suffering in this moment that need relief on housing, that need relief from paid sick leave. We need to meet sooner at the council. We need to do our job. So I certainly hope that we defeat this motion right now to set the meeting to May 20th, 2020, so that we can bring forward a new measure to meet earlier as a city council and do the job of the people who are dying and suffering in this moment. Please vote no. Madam President, I wish to speak to Alderman Vasquez. Chair recognizes Alderman Austin. Madam President, um, I, I reluctantly agree with Alderman uh, Lopez in regards to one of our colleagues using uh, profanity on our council. I think that we've gotten out of hand of respect for one another and for respect of the presidency. I'm, I'm asking all of our colleagues, let's keep this decent and in order. Thank you, Madam President. Awesome. Madam President, I've had my hand up for a while. 
Yes, I'm, I'm coming to you, uh, Alderman Spazzato. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. I concur with my colleague, uh, Alderman Austin. This, this is just out of control. This has to stop, okay? We're all trying to do our best. We're well aware of the fact that we're in tough times right now. But please, please stop the nonsense. That's all I ask. Thank you very much, Madam President. The chair recognizes Alderman Vasquez. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I do apologize if anything is viewed as nonsense or as an insult that is not my intent at all. Um, all I intended to do was to move our meeting up sooner because the people of Chicago want us to find solutions. And in the municipal code of the states, we're supposed to have meetings every two weeks. So if we're able to do that when it's not a crisis, to ask to be able to do some a meeting earlier during the crisis is not outlandish. It is doing exactly the same thing the executive branch is doing, asking to be nimble and fast in the moment of crisis to find solutions for our city. That is the only reason I'm asking. So I'm asking for a roll call because I'd like to know which members of this council don't think we should move meetings up sooner so we can solve problems for our city. Who recognizes Alderman Riley? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Madam President, I, I didn't mean to have my hand up. Is, is this a punk you show? Is this a punk you show? <laughs> me, man. So there's a, there's a motion for a roll call. Mr. Clerk, uh, please call the roll call vote on Alderman Mitchell's uh, motion for an our ordinance. I do. Set the next time of the city council meeting as May 20th at 10 a.m. A yes vote is setting the time for May 20th, 10 a.m. A no vote is opposing that. Mr. Clerk. Alderman Lasada. No. Alderman Hopkins. Alderman Hopkins. Yes. Alderman Dowell. Yes. Alderman King. Alderman King. Alderman Harrison. Yes. Alderman Sawyer. Yes. Alderman Mitchell. Aye. Alderman Harris. Aye. Alderman Beal. Yep. Alderman Zabowski Garza. Alderman Zabowski Garza. Yes. Alderman Thompson. Yes. Alderman Carbonus. Yes. Alderman Quinn. Yes. Alderman Burke. Oh. I'm sorry, Alderman Burke. No. Alderman Lopez. No. Alderman Coleman. Yes. Alderman Moore. Yes. Alderman Curtis. Alderman Curtis. Alderman O'Shea. Aye. Alderman Taylor. No. Alderman Brookins. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez. Aye. Alderman Tavares. Aye. Alderman Scott. Aye. Alderman Cicho Lopez. No. Alderman Molinado. Aye. Alderman Burnett. Alderman yes, yes. Alderman Urban. Alderman Urban. Alderman Telefiero. Aye. Alderman Arroyas. Yes. Alderman Cardona. Yes. Alderman Wagespach. Yes. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. No. Alderman Austin. Aye. Alderman Maria Rosa. No. Alderman Villegas. Aye. Alderman Miss. Aye. <coughs> Alderman Spazzato. Yes. Alderman Nugent. Yes. Alderman Vasquez. No. Alderman Napolitano. Aye. Alderman Riley. Yes. Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderman Tony. Aye. Alderman Tony. Yes. Alderman Gardner. Aye. Alderman Kappelman. Yes. Alderman Martin. No. Alderman Osterman. Aye. Alderman Hand. 
No. Alden Silverstein. No. Alderman King. No. Alderman Urban. No. Alderman Curtis. You're out of there are 36 days and 13 days. The motion uh, passes. The next to the council meeting will be May 20th uh, at 10 a.m. All of our all of Mitchell motion to for adjournment. We got a no further business. Madam President, President. Pardon me, you consider. consider. Roll call on the uh, on the, uh, the remaining items. Will the alderman please make sure the microphones are unmuted? Uh, Mr. Clerk, will you please call a roll call on the uh, omnibus? Oh. Alderman Vespada. Aye. Alderman Hopkins. Yes. Alderman Dowell. Aye. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman Harrison. Yes. Alderman Sawyer. Aye. Alderman Mitchell. Aye. Alderman Harris. Aye. Alderman Beal. Yep. Alderman Sebastian Garza. Aye. Alderman Hoffman. Aye. Alderman Cardenas. Aye. Alderman Quinn. Aye. Alderman Burke. Alderman Burke. <laughs> Alderman Lopez. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Lopez votes aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Alderman Coleman. Aye. Alderman Moore. Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Curtis. Alderman Curtis. Alderman O'Shea. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Uh, Alderman Brookings. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez. Aye. Alderman Tavares. Aye. Alderman Scott. Aye. Alderman Ticho Lopez. Aye. Alderman Maldonado. Aye. Alderman Burnett. Aye. Alderman Urban. Aye. Alderman Tafiero. Aye. Alderman Arroyas. Aye. Alderman Cardona. Aye. Alderman Bagaspan. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. Aye. Alderman Austin. Aye. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Aye. Alderman Villegas. Aye. Alderman Nix. Aye. Alderman Spazzato. Yes. Alderman Nugent. Yes. Alderman Vasquez. Yes. Alderman Napolitano. Aye. Alderman Riley. Aye. Alderman Smith. Alderman Smith. Aye. Alderman Tunney. Aye. Alderman Gardner. Aye. Alderman Kappelman. Aye. Alderman Martin. Aye. Alderman Osterman. Aye. Alderman Haddon. Aye. Alderman Silverstein. Aye. Alderman Burke. Aye. Alderman Curtis. Alderman Curtis. You're out of there are 49 days, no days. The matters on the uh, on the list are therefore um, passed. Alderman Thompson on the motion for reconsideration of the uh, omnibus. Madam President, can we please uh, motion to reconsider this last vote? <laughs> All those in favor of the motion for reconsideration. Oh, 
signify by saying aye? Aye. All those opposed say nay? Aye. No. No. Absolutely no. 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 Heck no. no. The motion for reconsideration fails. <laughs> Mitchell, on a motion to adjourn. Madam President, I move that we adjourn. Madam President, two people have their hand up. There's no one to be in adjournment. Um, Alderman Lopez, the chair recognizes Alderman Lopez. Thank you, Madam President. I know we are all eager to attend this meeting, um, but I do have a, a point of order. With regard to the previous point that I raised about the admonishment of the language, as well as the second comment that came in during this vote, which is whether or not we were all being punked or this was a bunk show, I'd like to know if we will be admonishing those members as well for their comments that impugn this body now. Well, Alderman Lopez, unlike your comment from the other day, I did not hear those, but I'll go back to what Chairman Austin said and Alderman Spisato. Our town and our city is watching. There are children that are watching. I would expect the members of this body to conduct themselves in an appropriate professional manner. While we may not all agree on every issue, and that's the, the heart of democracy, is robust debate, we can do so without impugning the integrity of individuals, without impugning the integrity of the process, and then without impugning the integrity of the, the body. But the residents of this city and Importantly, the voters of your ward are watching, and I would just ask members of the city, of your city. Okay. thank you. you conduct themselves. Sorry, sir. If you, Alderman Lopez, please, I'd ask you not to interrupt. You want courtesy, you need to give courtesy. I asked for, I asked for a point of privilege because of my reputation and character have been impugned, and you said you did not. If we moved on that, or we are moving now. Alderman Mitchell on a motion to adjourn. Once again, there being no further business before this body, I move that we adjourn. Aye. 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 I'm going to mute your phone. All of us in favor of the motion to adjourn signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Council is adjourned. Thank you.